morning guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I hope you guys are doing good this morning. I will wait a little bit here. I've got some fun stuff to share. I'm not sure my connection seems a little funny, so I will wait and see if we can get some other people on here. Uh, I thought we'd share some homesteading and off-grid and life tips with everybody this morning. So I'm just going to wait a little bit here. What gorgeous weather we are having. I am like so excited. That's why my cheeks are all flushed. I just did a uh, treatment out on my back porch in the sun and it just felt so good to be sitting there soaking up the vitamin D, which I need also. So it was just, it's just wonderful. But our weather has been low 70s and it has just been gorgeous with a nice breeze and just very refreshing. I could handle these temperatures all year long. This is just awesome. And it just smells so good outside. So many things are blooming and it just, it's, it's wonderful. So it's not looking like anybody's jumping on right yet. So I am going to dive in here, share my thoughts, and if we get people on, that's great. If not, you guys can watch a replay and you guys on YouTube can follow along. Oh, hello, Brenda. Thanks for joining. Where are you from, Brenda? We had an absolutely amazing weekend this past weekend. We actually got a chance to get away. The mountain boy wasn't interested in going, so he stayed um, home here and held down the fort with the dogs. And the mountain man and I got to get out with some friends of ours and go camping. And we actually camped in our hammocks, um, both in Montana and in Idaho. Uh, we did like a big loop. And it was just such an amazing escape. Sometimes we just need to do that and escape and get out there. But I am going to try to do something here while I have you guys on here. See if my live shows up on here. I want to share some photos in the feed. Hey, good morning. Glad to have you guys joining me. Um, getting out and being able to be... Here we go. Let's see if I can do this. I don't know if I can share here. I want to share some photos in the feed. There we go. Nothing like listening to yourself. Give me a second here. I want to try to share these photos. How have you guys been? What have you been up to? And are you getting things in your garden? Are you getting out and um, enjoying, enjoying the wonderful weather? We have had an absolutely amazing weather. Oh darn it. I can't, I don't think I can add to the comments right now. Let me just try another way. Oh, maybe here. Aha. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to share some pictures and hopefully you guys can see them in the comments below. And let me just find the other ones. There we go. It's just fun to be able to share. I got to get a little bit more techy here and be able to share things a little differently with you. But right now I'm going to share it this way. In the comments below, you should be able to see three photos. My mountain man is a tremendous cook when it comes to, well, no matter where we are. He is um, really good on an open fire as far as cooking our meals. Uh, he used to do a lot of pack trips back in the backcountry in Wyoming, and he did a lot of hunting trips as well. So he was camp cook and also guide. But um, in the one picture, you can see him making fry bread. And in the other picture, you can see that he's got elk steaks on a skewer over the fire. We've got coffee going on and potatoes in a big frying pan. And then he also made eggs. So we might hike, but we, we eat well when we're out there. It's good that we do hike. We come back a lot heavier, I think. But he's an amazing cook. And it's just there's nothing better than cooking on an open fire. So right now... We are taking advantage of the opportunity. Um, good morning, Sean. Good morning, Debbie. Um, we are taking advantage of being out there and being able to uh, take opportunities with the open fire because it gets so dry here that later on this season we won't be able to have an open fire and cook on it. So it really sucks sometimes because there's nothing better. I love sitting by, by a campfire and just taking it all in and... In the other picture, you can see my feet on my hammock. We were hanging on the side of the mountain on the first night in Montana, and it was awesome. Now, we did have a big tarp over top of us because it was a little sketchy looking, um, but we were he enabled that by uh, using uh, mule tape, which is some heavy cordage, 
and we strung that um, zigzagged across the trees above us and were able to uh, put a tarp up. So we stayed dry, but I have to share this. This was really wild. A storm blew in and of course it was an electrical storm and we're hanging there in the trees and our friend and his kids and the dogs were in a tent below us. And uh, the storm started coming in, but all of a sudden simultaneously the lightning and the thunder hit and it was so close that it made your hair stand up and you could just feel it go through your entire body. It was really freaky. It was that close. And I was ready to dive and hit the truck just because the truck has the, the rubber and it's a safer place to be than hanging in a tree. Good morning, Chad. And uh, waited it out a little bit and the, it just started to dissipate then. But man, it was, you know, our eyes were closed and it was like somebody just sh shined the brightest light possible in our eyes. It was really crazy. But it was also really neat to experience. And, um, we uh, hammock camped the whole weekend then, and I'd really got to see some nice scenery, uh, some different parts of Idaho that we haven't seen before, so it was really nice. But I encourage you guys to get out. Get out, practice your skills, uh, sleep in the wild. If you haven't, you're missing out. Some of you may not like it, um, but I'm a dirt girl. I like being out in the dirt. I like, you know, I'm not keen on spiders because I react poorly to their bites, but they're easy to flick and fling and get rid of. And just hanging in the trees like that, there's just nothing better. A wise old woodsman once told me a good campfire will cure anything that ails you. Amen, Sean. Amen. Is that not true? It's just amazing. The food tastes better. Uh, it's aromatherapy going on. Um, it's just, it's awesome. And I did good. I was really concerned because I went... I wasn't sure with my body uh, and my, my illness as to whether being out there amongst all the molds, because everything's so wet right now, how I would do, but I had a little bit of head pain, I think more from our height and um, the barometric pressure, uh, but I, like, like Sean said, I think the fire cured all that was ailing me, so it was absolutely amazing. So guys, don't miss out on getting out, and don't forget to take your kids, such great learning and opportunities to be out there and teach them things. Um, I also wanted to uh, share with you my goodies. There's my spearmint jelly that is finished and my dandelion jelly. You can see that's a little bit lighter. And then here is the lilac. Now you can, I don't know if you can see that, but it actually does have like a purple tinge to it. And I also have my strawberry. And there's nothing better than fresh jellies, especially when you're making them from what most people consider weeds. And uh, the lilacs, I was blessed by my friend Vicki, who shared some of her uh, lilac blooms. Um, but everything's out there, guys. It's all at your fingertips, just like it is mine. It's just a matter of taking the time and, and, and getting out there and doing it. Yes, get the kids out there. Absolutely, Chad. Chad's another one who's constantly out there with his littles. And um, it's just, it's great being out there with your kids. There's nothing better than teaching the kids how to do these things. They get so empowered. Our friend's kids are, hmm, let's see, age wise. Well, I'm going to go by grade. One's going into third grade next year. She'll be finishing second grade this right now. And um, the other is finishing kindergarten going to first. So six and nine, eight, nine, maybe. Um, great kids. And they just love being out there. And they had the opportunity to each build their fire ring while Glenn was making the meal. And they practiced starting their fires and gathering their materials and keeping the fire going. So, you know... That skill, although some people would be fearful that that's teaching them, you know, how to do something dangerous, yeah, but it's also teaching them how to do something that could save their life if they're ever stuck somewhere. Even if they don't use it as, as a child, but they use it as an adult because they learned it when they were out in the woods with their dad. Plus, it's such a great time to bond with your kids, honestly. And I told the mountain boy today on our walk, I said, next time we're going out, he's got to go with because he missed out on so much fun. He was just afraid it was going to be too cold. <laughs> Last time we were camping, it was pretty cold. So anyway, I want to share something else with you. You guys hear a lot about modern homesteading. You hear a lot about off-gridding. You hear a lot about, um, you know, primitive skills and things. And a lot of average people feel um, that that doesn't apply to them. But honestly, I feel all of those skills, traditional, primitive, homesteading, off-grid, all those skills are things that 
the average man should know because they are for us a lifestyle of preparedness they are things that we think about all the time good morning Blake glad to have you joining me uh, Sean says practice and understanding doesn't mean it's dangerous it teaches respect and discipline absolutely absolutely and and that's that's what it's about plus it also um, empowers encourages and gives them confidence and and also pride that they're being included in in the opportunity to participate that just ca giving them a pack these kids each have their own little pocket knife starter pocket knife and they're whittling all the time while we're out there they get their hot dog sticks ready and you know and and they've cut themselves while we're out we've had to patch them up but you know what it's it's part of experience and and it's it'll teach them just like you said it's going to teach them the respect for the for the the equipment so great great thoughts and thanks for sharing that Sean but um the skills that we share and when i'm sharing the modern homesteading things and the and the gardening things you know if you live in town and you're living vicariously it doesn't mean you can't do these things. It doesn't mean that just because where you are is is limiting you. And and knowing these things and practicing these things. You know, even if you live in an apartment, there's nothing stopping you from getting out into the woods and getting some dirt time and also experiencing it. So don't limit yourself and don't feel limited when somebody says modern homesteading things and you're not a homesteader so you don't participate. Please don't limit yourself. Knowledge is power, and it doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing in your life today. You can still learn these skills, and these skills are what are going to carry you through if anything were to ever happen in any way to our country, um, to your your family. You know, we've gone through situations. Had we not lived a life of preparedness with our food storage in 2016, when we went six and a half months without an income, we wouldn't have been eating unless we were foraging and harvesting. And we know how to do that, but it would have been adding more stress to the fire when we were already very stressed. So eating like kings and queens because we planned ahead and prepared is key. And, and that's what these things are for. So the reason I'm mentioning that today is because in addition to getting the um, Trail Wilderness Academy live and running, I was also videoing a segment for the Modern Homesteading Summit that my great friend Melissa Norris is running. And I love her dearly and I'm so proud of her. She put together a really nice uh, summit and it will be starting on June 10th. And you are able to get your free seats a while. It is all online so you can watch it at your convenience. I did a course on things to think about before going off grid. And there are 26 other homesteaders and off-gridders that have shared their knowledge and insight. And I encourage you to go check it out. You can go there by simply going to treyerwilderness.com slash homesteading summit, all one word. And the links are down below. Good morning, Richard. So, guys, don't miss out on these free things. They put three or four um, presentations in a day. And I believe it starts at 7 a.m. and then and then it switches off at midnight, um, and then the next days will start again. Um, so you have 20. I believe you have 24 hours to watch the uh, presentation. So it's seven to seven. So it's you've got 24 hours to watch the presentation. So depending on your work schedule, what you've got going on, you can squeeze it into your day. Um, they often have encore days and then you are also able to purchase the event, but it is free to everybody. Oh, good deal. Thanks, Sean. Have a great day. And thanks for being a part of this. So don't miss out on that. The other thing that's going on is I had mentioned last week Grow Your Own Food workshop was going on and they are having their encore days today and tomorrow. So you can get in and pick up and watch the ones that pertain to you, the ones that you would like. And that's something else you can do is see what presentations are most important to you and most valuable to you. If you can't watch them all, pick the ones that you can. So um, the Grow Your Own Food you can find by going to treyerwilderness.com slash growyourownfood. And again, the links are all below, and there's a lot of links below. Check them out. They're all things that pertain to what we're talking about and some inspiration. Now, this is, one of the, this is what I wanted to share with you today. Right here, you see that? It's frozen water. You can see it's starting to melt a little bit. I just pulled it out of my freezer. 
I have this in my freezer. This was shared with me. This is not my own idea, but it's ingenious, and I'm going to share it. Um, I don't know who the original person was, but my dear friend Mona shared it with me. There is, if I can get it out of here, there's a quarter in here. There we go. There's a quarter on the top of my frozen ice. So say you're out and your freezer goes out and the electric goes out so your freezer your freezer's off while you're at work. And for us, we have a propane freezer, but our lines could get clogged or our tank could run out and, and it would shut it off till we switch the tanks over. So it could happen to us too. By having that quarter on top of ice, if your power goes out and your freezer starts to thaw, if that quarter ends up at the bottom, you know very well that your meat's probably spoiled because it's been off for a long time and at which point you have no idea how long it's been off. But if that quarter only ends up midway, that means that your food did not get spoiled and, and that you can still save what's in your freezer that it probably may have thought a little bit but it ref it's going to refreeze or it's part way but by having that in there it gives you a gauge on how long the freezer's been off so i encourage everybody to do that because i know many people who have thrown away a whole freezer full of meat and things because they weren't sure how long it was off and sometimes it's pretty evident, especially if you've been gone for a while, um, you'll smell it first. But this is a great little gauge to be able to determine how long your freezer's been off. The other thing to keep in mind is I use glass. Good morning, Holly. Um, you don't want to fill it the whole way up or this jar is going to crack. Good morning, Carrie. Um, so fill it like three quarters of the way and put your quarter in the top and that way you will have a gauge to know how long your freezer has been out when the power goes off if you're out of the house uh, and you can also um, if if the power does go out and you're there and you don't have a generator if you keep your freezers closed they will stay cold for a long time so there's a good chance that you will be able to you know save things if it only goes out for a couple of hours that's awesome. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know. Isn't that when, when Mona told me, I was like, you know, aha, you know, duh. But that's such, such a great, such a great way and gauge to be able to double check, you know, what's going on in your freezer. And, and with all the game meat we have and the work that it is, requ that's required to get it in our freezer, I would absolutely be sick if we lost it. And I'm sure you guys would too, especially if you're purchasing things as well because then you've got money tied up in it. We have time and sweat and sometimes blood tied up into getting our meats in the freezer, not so much the money. But nobody wants to throw good food away. Oh, good deal. Good deal, Tammy. Yeah, that's a great, it's a great idea. You don't have to use glass. You can use a plastic container, but I figured that was easiest. Um, it enables me to see through it real well. Hello, truly. So, um, guys, it's really important to be able to educate ourselves and learn how to do these things and not be fearful and not be afraid. Hi, Becca. To not be afraid of um, making mistakes. Guys, mistakes happen all the time, and without a mistake, you're not going to learn. So, you know, I, I look at mistakes and, and mishaps as stepping stones. It all depends how you look at it. You know that my cup is over, always overflowing, and I'm more thankful that I have a cup than how full it is. So it's my positive perspective, but if you use your mistakes as stepping stones, you'll constantly be moving forward, not backward, right? So um, those of you that just jumped on, I was mentioning that with um, you know all the modern homesteading and off-grid things that are being shared and, and different skills that are being shared, you know sometimes people feel that that doesn't pertain to them because they're not actually homesteaders or off-gridders. But this knowledge is open to all of us. So check out below, directly under the word resources are the two links that I was sharing for the Modern Homesteading Summit that's coming up on June 10th that you can get involved in now. And if you're interested in being able to watch them later, they've got a great price on it right now. Um, and then the Grow Your Own Food Summit um, is doing their um, uh, encore days. Sorry, had a brain fart for a moment. So... 
check that out. And uh, for those of you that just jumped in, I shared some pictures of our weekend in the comments below so that you can check those out. Uh, it's always important to get out and step away from our chaos. We all have chaos. And um, last week I shared about endurance and I want to just share something with you. I was doing my um, devotions outside this morning and um, I was going through Hebrews and read this and I just thought it pertained so much. I almost wish I would have found it last week, but there's purpose in it this week too. Because um, perseverance is important. Every day, every week, we're going to run into struggles. We're going to run into things. And you know I'm a positive person. I don't mention that because life sucks. It's not that. It's that um, there's just, there's we're not promised anything perfect. We're not promised, uh, you know, um, clicking our heels are, are going to occur every day. Um, it's what we make it though. And being able to persevere through our struggles and anything and in learning, persevere through making jelly when it doesn't turn out right the first time. You know, some, my first batches of jelly ended up being syrup, not jelly. And that was with elderberries. So, you know, it's going to happen to all of us. You know, I'm no different than you are. We make mistakes too, or things don't always go the way we want them to go. Um, you know, we might be skinning an animal and want to use the hide and accidentally slip and put a hole in it. I mean, we're no different than you guys. Stuff happens. And, you know, I was a little bit disappointed when I pulled my jelly up the morning after because, oh, I'm holding it too high, sorry. Um, it didn't look like it set right, but it actually set wonderful. Pomona's um, pectin is awesome. But you got to try and you got to persevere through the hiccups, use them as stepping stones and keep going. But in Hebrews 10, 34 through 36, it says, you suffered along with those who were thrown into jail. And when you, when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. And guys, you know I hold true to this stuff. And I lean on this. And this is my, my life. And it's my strength. And I just thought it was kind of interesting that I read that this morning after sharing with you what I did last week. and Or the week before, I guess it was. And uh, it's just... One of those things, you know, we're walking through a valley. We could very well lose everything, but it's all material things. And it's how you view life. Um, I am so rich in the relationships that I have, in the life that I live, that the material things around me really are meaningless. They help me through my day, but they're not what I hold on to for, for anything. It's just material things. So that's just a really um, excessive view of perseverance. But it's all how you view it. It's all how you view life. And I know many of you get afraid to try the new things. And you see us showing you how to do it. And, and, and you know, we've, we've perfected it. We've done it. And it, it may intimidate you. But I don't want you to be intimidated. I want you to also realize that we're human and make mistakes too. And there's no reason why you can't do this as well. So don't miss out on the free trainings that are available to you. Um, sometimes it can be hard to cram things into our already tight schedule. So I do get that because I sometimes would like to participate in the summits and watch them. And I don't have the time. But there are options to buy them if that's something that you are able to do. But don't miss out on what you can. Like I said, if you only have a limited time, figure out what the courses are that will best benefit you at this time. Tammy says... Our jelly didn't set, became pancake syrup. Yep, you just, you, you roll with it. It's still usable. And you know what? If it doesn't become pancake syrup, it ends up in my meats. Jellies and um, preserves, jams, um, the sweet stuff is so amazing in, in fried up meats. I uh, utilize apples and onions a lot of times. Uh, I'll just slice up an apple and put it in with my meats and, and different fruits. Pears go really good, too. I've used my pear jellies and meats, too. But um, the next thing I'll be making is hot pepper jelly. I absolutely love that on a bagel with really good organic cream cheese. Um, I will have to be making bagels out of coconut and almond flour, but uh, I'm sure it'll work well. I have made bagels already, and they're really good, so I just haven't made them in a while. But don't miss out, guys. Don't miss out because you feel you don't fit the mold. You know, last 
when I was talking about the perseverance, I was talking about comparing yourself and, and I think a lot of people compare themselves to others and question their abilities. Don't question your abilities and don't compare yourself because it'll hold you back. Yep, my strawberry jam syrup is now for waffles or pound cake topping, cheesecake topping too. So there you go. You may gladly bring that over to my house along with your cheesecake. <laughs> um, but this stuff is usable. It's not like it's trashed. It's not like it's not used, you know, it's, it's useless now. You gotta, even, even when you make a dish, sometimes I'll make something. Good morning, Tiffany. And it may not turn out the way I want it to, but the next night I'll use it in leftovers and it's absolutely amazing. You know, it's just, I never waste anything. Nothing gets thrown away. And even our scraps go to the chickens. Um, some of the scraps go to the dogs. But, you know, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> we'll set a date. <laughs> um, but don't waste anything and don't don't be upset with your mistakes because, in my opinion, that's not a mistake. You just, you just uh, flipped it and used it a little differently than you initially intended, right? Now, I just want to encourage you guys to also, you know, take advantage of what's around you. Like I said earlier, um, with my dandelion jelly, you know, that's something that most people consider as a weed. And I'll tell you what, the dandelion jelly tastes like honey. So it is our number two honey in the house. And honestly, I can't believe I haven't been making it all these years. I have been actually, um, utilizing the dandelion to dry for my teas and the roots for my teas and sometimes for coffee. I just wasn't making the jelly and what a mistake I've been making. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to wrap this up by just saying a prayer for you guys. I do this every week. Um, it may not be your thing, but it's my gift to you. So Dear Lord, I just thank you for these folks taking the time out of their busy schedules to join me, for sharing their input and, and their tips and tricks. And and Lord, just uh, be with them, strengthen them, give them perseverance and endurance through their week. And uh, just help those that are in need that may be struggling or ill. And Lord, just uh, bless them, show your presence to them, and just uh, continue to guide them on their journey just as you are on ours. And Lord, I just ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So guys, again, I appreciate you taking the time to join me. Uh, join me next Wednesday, 1030 on Facebook Live. And uh, don't miss out on the Homesteading Summit. It starts um, on June 10th, but you can sign up now. That way you'll get their emails and know what's going on. There's bonuses involved also, which are really great resources to add to your archives. And uh, don't miss out. So guys, have a fantastic day. Thank you again for joining me today. And God bless.